you prep for a quarterback you don't really have any film on? Uh, you just got to see what they do system-wise. And they're going to stay within their system and do what they do. They obviously have great confidence in it. So, you know, that's, that's what we're preparing for. We know there's elements of quarterback run. We still got to prepare for that. Um, and then the, all the stuff they do just in, in general. When, when was the last time you, you was in, were in that situation where you had to kind of put together a plan without really knowing who you were facing? Oh, gosh, that's hard to say. I'm not sure. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I, just, I, was, yeah. I was curious how it worked <laughs> yeah. out. Like, that's, what, that's what it was leading to, I guess. Yeah. You decide uh, Rajon and Rajon not to play? No. Uh, you expect number one to play? Yeah, it's been good. How much of an advantage is that? Uh, well, that's that's the thing when you when you look at who's missing for them, it's it's their quarterback and a receiver. That's about it. You know, they're all O lines playing. Their running backs are extremely talented. It's really and there's no drop off between the ones and the twos for them. So it, we got to go out there. It's an extremely talented team. Whoever lines up against us, so we got to go out and execute the play. We asked some of the players yesterday, just like how the preparation. Uh, now that you have a little bit more time, I know you guys are having a big focus on recruiting right now, but um, just the amount of time you've had to prepare. Um, knowing that we do have a quarterback that's not playing, wide receiver that's not playing, just how much of that preparation is watching their film versus watching your own film? It's a combination of both. It's, it's okay, what do we do well? What do we have to fix from, you know, especially our last couple games? Uh, what are they looking at? And then, you know, okay, then how does it fit to, to their system and what they do on offense? Big picture, you know, some people fans have said maybe playing the 6-6 six six Florida team but how big is a win against a Florida SEC team? Uh, a, w- a win and 10 wins is big. Um, like I said, I mean, this this team's talented. I mean, like there's, there's no 6-6 six and six or 9-3. and three. It doesn't matter. The team's talented. Um, why, why they're 6-6, six and six, I don't know exactly, but they're extremely talented. We've got to be ready to play. Katan Noladapo has been showing up in a lot of all-conference uh, teams. Mm-hmm. What were the conversations like with him in the offseason to, to get him to this point? I, I think it was just his hard work um, and then really, you know, getting in, watching film, um, studying in the off season with Coach Blue um, and just, yeah, it's really Catan deciding that he's going to take his game to the next level and, and doing the work it takes in the weight room, on the field, and then in the classroom as well to get it done. Where, where did you feel like he needed to make the biggest strides to, to get where he's, he's, he's got? Uh, just his assignment sound and his eyes. I think he's improved this year greatly in that. It's allowed him to make more plays. The players have kind of expressed that their mindset going into the bowl game is pretty much the same they've had all season, but it really was sparked in January when the team came back from a tough bowl loss. Do you feel like that bowl loss last year sparked something inside some of these returners? I think it's a good learning lesson. Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter who you play or where you play them. Um, they're going to show up ready to play. You have to show up and play your best, and then you got to execute and, and be ready to play. And so I think the first couple days of practice, those guys have been locked in and doing a great job. So I'm excited to see how we continue. You, you just they just announced a new contract for you. Uh, the, the the next step. How much do you think about the next step, which would be to be a head coach? And how how prepared are you? Do you want to be no. a head coach? Uh, no, I don't. So that's easy. Wait, yeah, that's all. You don't do. want to be a head coach at this point in time. I have no desire. I got no desire to do anything but like I just like coaching and teaching too much I'm I'm not into the administration and politics stuff so probably right now not a good fit for me so speaking of head coaches uh coach Smith very accomplished he's won some awards this season just describe him as a leader to me and just talk to me a little bit about working with him and how he really has from a coaching standpoint been able to be such a leader for this team to help you guys be so successful this season um one he's he's clear in his message and clear in his vision um, he's consistent in his communication, and then he's just good with people and building relationships. And I think when you got those three things, um, you can be successful in an organization. Yeah, and then just playing a SEC team, very just different brand of football they've got over there. Do you guys expect the environment to be a lot different? And is that something the team's been talking about as you prepare for this weekend? Or next uh, not really. We expect it to be a good, good environment, just because we expect you know the place to be. I mean, they're, they're going to travel well. We're going to travel well. I think it's, it'll be a great atmosphere, and we're looking forward to it. Just going back to what you just said. Uh, just going back to what you just said about not wanting to be a head coach. You know, it seems like everyone in this industry always wants to climb, climb, climb. So, what made you kind of realize here that this situation is is right for you right now? Made you content here? Well, really, the things that motivate me, like uh, money, is not a motivator for me. Um, I'm kind of motivated by uh, success and then quality of life. 
and opportunity here to be successful and keep it going is great. And then my quality of life and the people I work with, the people I coach, I'm just, yeah, very happy. This essentially three week gap between games, this is a, a good size gap to get healthy and not forget everything. Um, are you happy to be kind of playing a little earlier instead of in a couple of weeks? Well, it's, yeah, I, I am actually, yes. I, I like, you know, that sometimes you play in those later bowl games, that month-long wait to play, you know, can be, uh, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> but, yeah, we're happy to play early. I should, I'll just say that, yeah. So I'm excited that we get to stay on our kind of our rhythm of the season, so how we, we kind of float and then continue. A little bit, uh, it's been five years since Chris Smith was hired, mm -hmm. almost exactly. From where the program was when you came on board five years ago to where it is now culture-wise? Yeah, night and day, night and day. I, in, in every way, it's hard to pinpoint one little thing, but I just think the, the way the guys work, their expectations of themselves and, and this team is uh, yeah, drastically Do you think different. that is showing up with the lack of, for players showing up in the portal? I, I think it shows. I, I think that is a sign of, uh, you know, of a good culture and the people are, the guys are happy here and they, they feel that they're valued and they feel that they, they have a chance to be successful. I do, yeah.